Hey there, how you doing? Y'all right? Last week was a little rough. Let's talk about it. So the events of last week, call it a coup, call it an insurrection, call it whatever you want. <clears throat> they were a little harrowing. Yes, a little hard to watch, um, a little hard to go about your day, just doing your day job. Uh, while people are storming the Capitol. Now, it's not like we didn't have warning that they were gonna do this. I mean, they were literally publicly organizing on the internet for a while. Also, like, white supremacy is a founding concept of our nation. Ever heard of the Three-Fifths Compromise? We knew the day would come when white supremacists would have enough of other people trying to exercise their rights. But man, imagine if in 2016, um, like the day before the election, if like you could travel back in time and see yourself <clears throat> bright-eyed and hopeful about the first female president. Well, four years from now, if you even have a job at all, it'll be working from home because there's a global pandemic. You cannot leave your house unless you're wearing a face covering. The government has completely shut down and there are people, insurrectionists, attacking the Capitol building. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, dead. Frankly, I'm glad my 2016 self uh, had no clue. I mean, like she knew it was bad, but she didn't know how exhausting it would be. Anyway, um, in some ways it feels really hopeless. It feels like we're too far gone as a country. It feels like, but you know what, let's uh, pack up and leave. Canada, New Zealand sounds nice. Uh, I'd love to just live in a field in the south of France making bread. That sounds nice right now. But I recognize that's a privilege and not everyone has that option. And I don't really actually have that option either. So um, we kind of have to stick around and figure out how to pick up the pieces and move forward from here. I don't have all the answers for this, but I wanted to create a video, just a quick little thing to say hi. Uh, we're in it together. Let's brainstorm ways that we can um, push for the change that we need in this country. There are some hopeful things. I mean, the whole, you know, coup attempt uh, kind of put a damper on things, but um, there was the whole like, Georgia flipped blue. We now have a majority in the Congress and in the presidency. Like, these are hopeful things, right? Cool. But, but how do we ensure the integrity of this democracy continues without erupting into complete chaos. Did this democracy have any integrity to begin with? That's also a question that I don't have answers to, but a worthwhile criticism. But I'm a I'm an ideas person. I'm an action-oriented gal. I need a plan. So let's plan how we're gonna try to fix this, or at least put the pieces back in a slightly more functional order. And you know, change doesn't come overnight. It's a cliche because it's true. Like if we want to push for something, we got to be in it for the long haul. That's how this works. But let's talk about actual things that you and I can do right now and in the coming months to try to feel at least some sort of glimmering hope that our actions have any sort of effect on anything in this world. First, let me say hello. My name's Lija. I'm a real life lawyer on a mission to demystify the law and how it affects your everyday life. That's right, I am a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer. Nothing that I say should be construed as legal advice and you should always seek the advice of a licensed attorney before making any legal decisions. Okay, so I think the first important distinction to draw here is that there are things that can be done within the system to reform it and there are things that can be done outside of the system to try to make everyone's life a little bit better. And I think you have to have a solid, even, split of both. Some people have strengths that will lend themselves better to the outside the system work, and some of us have strengths that will lend itself better to the inside the system work. I think as a lawyer, I have a better understanding of the system, and when I say the system, I mean like the government, the governing bodies, the laws, the regulations that make this country work. Let's start with the within the system tangible things that can be done. Okay, so the first important point that I want to make is that you can never underestimate the power of local politics. Local politics, super boring. I get it. And especially when things are happening at a federal level that feel like an emergency, it's really hard to focus on like referendums and boring meetings and town halls and things happening at the hyper local level. But I'm telling you that is where change starts. If you don't believe me, look at Georgia. Stacey Abrams was a representative in Georgia's state house of representatives. She repped maybe like 50,000 people. Then she ran for state governor and she lost. Then she got pissed as hell. She organized she founded Fair Fight 2020 and she did 
the most hyper local work that you can do. She did grassroots organizing. She did door knocking. She did town hall meetings. She had the hard discussions with local people in Georgia just to get them to go and vote. It's pretty thankless. It's not glamorous, but she did it. And for two years, she did it. And that work literally changed history. We have two new Democratic senators from Georgia. The Senate has been flipped to Democratic control. She made history. She changed lives by doing this hyper local work. That's where change happens and it's super important. So I say take the time now in the coming months to get to know your representatives at the city council and state government level. What are their names? What are their politics? Go to their town hall meetings, go to their meet and greets, sign up on their email list so that you know what they're doing. They'll send out that information. You don't have to go searching for it. They'll give it to you if you ask for it. Get to know them really well. Find some topics that are happening at the local level that you're passionate about. There's a lot of local organizations already doing that work. Google it, go to their websites. They will have already comprehensive background on the laws that are affecting whatever issue it is that you care about. Take that information and bring it up to your representatives. Tell them I care about this bill and here's why. And here's why I need you to pass it or I need you to not pass it. I care about this issue and I need you to write a bill about it because there isn't one. Do that with your local representatives. Send them an email make a phone call, send them a handwritten letter, show up at their doorstep, not their home doorstep. I mean the doorstep of their office, wherever they work. Get your friends to do the same thing. If there are five of you doing that work, that's 20 times that they're gonna hear about this issue. Your voice can be so loud in local politics if you just take the time to use it. Get to know these people, reach out to them regularly. Get a group of five friends together, make a commitment that once a quarter, you're each gonna reach out to each of these elected officials by email, by mail, by phone call, and by personal visit. That means that 20 times every quarter, this elected official is going to hear about your issue. If you're scared to show up at their office, I get it. It's a really uh, scary thing to do. Bring some friends. I mean, don't ambush them, but showing up with two to three people is totally valid. And then you'll each come in with your own perspective and your own way of trying to convince this politician why this matters. The more you do that, the louder the issue is going to seem to this elected official and the more they're going to feel the pressure that their constituents care about it and that they have to do something about it. Then you get to live rent-free in their minds, which is exactly what we want. Like I said, for help to know where to begin, look for local orgs that are doing work in an issue that you care about. Sign up on email lists of your elected representatives or go to their websites or the websites of the governments and wherever you live and look at what's on the table. Basically, there's a wealth of information out there. You just have to seek it out and stay informed. These people work for us and we need to hold them accountable. Okay, another thing that you can do within the system to try to create change Stay with me here, I know this is a big ask. You can run for office. Yeah, you, you can run for office. It takes a lot of work and money, but you can run on a platform that calls for empathy, that calls for understanding, that calls for basic human rights, that calls for whatever issue you're passionate about. You are allowed to run for that. People may or may not vote for you, but you can do it. And even if you don't win, you're going to start a larger conversation if you're vocal enough and if you care enough and if you're passionate enough about the issues that you run on. Movements are started by law elections. Again, look at Stacey Abrams. And there are already resources that exist to help you run for office. There's a website called She Should Run, sheshouldrun.org. It's gendered, but it is for people, non-binary folks, women who are interested in running for office. They will give you the tools, the education, the resources, and the context that you need to do so. Consider it. It doesn't have to be big. You could run for city council. You run for a smaller position. It's a part-time thing. You don't get paid much for it, but it will start conversations and it will start change and it will get you in front of people so that you can advocate for the things that you think need to be changed. You have a voice, you just gotta use it. All right, so thinking outside of the system, what can you do? First, you can share your skills. What are your skills? Make a list. What are you good at? What could you share with other people to help make their lives better, to help educate them, to give something that you already have, that you already know to the greater community that you live in. For example, I created this YouTube channel because I think the law is extremely inaccessible. I want people to know things. I want people to be able to ask questions to a lawyer and have their questions answered. It's not legal advice, but I can at least give you information for free on the internet. It's something I'm super passionate and excited about. So I'm giving it away for free because I want to help the world. I don't know. Do that. What can you do for others that will make their lives easier? What skills do you bring to the table? You'll notice from these points that I'm making that a large problem that exists that 
would address all of this is the issue of individualism in the United States. We have created this monster where everyone thinks that they have to bootstrap themselves and the level of self-reliance that's expected of people is just not natural. We're infighting and we're killing each other because we can't see how much we need each other. So one way to combat this is giving of yourself to others for the sole purpose of helping your community be a better place. Okay, another step that you can take is to educate yourself. I think this is one that was talked about a lot over the summer with the race riots that were happening all over the country. I think it's an important point that we can't forget. There is a wealth of information on the internet and in our public libraries that is free for accessing that you just have to get your eyes on, open your mind, be educated about things that you probably have blind spots on. Use the public library, organize a book exchange with your friends. Here are some examples, some books that have fundamentally changed the way that I see the world. It lifts a veil of what you think your understanding is and shows you the perspective of other people's experiences so that you are better equipped to have empathy and to realize the consequences of your actions of and of laws and of the way that our society works as a whole. Make an effort to learn whatever you can. Education is revolutionary. Okay, and then finally, let's talk about mutual aid. This is a concept that I really hadn't thought much about before the George Floyd riots. That's a blind spot on my part. Basically, the concept of mutual aid is that you give directly to a community member in need. Give your money, your time, your resources, whatever you have, instead of giving to a nonprofit or the government or whatever and having that trickle down to the people in need. The reason why this is important is because a lot of nonprofits have become embedded in the government and in private interests. There's a lot of the larger nonprofits whose CEOs make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. There's a lot of politicking and um, diverse interests that go into nonprofits that ultimately tend to hurt the very people that these nonprofits are supposed to be helping. You can bypass all that by just seeing a community member in need and giving them the help that they need. It's a really powerful tool. There's also the issue with nonprofits where we don't trust poor people to know what to do with their money. So we think if we give it to a nonprofit or the government, then they can dictate how that money is used to help poor people. This is extremely paternalistic. It also ignores the fact that a lot of wealthy people don't know what the hell they're doing with their money. It ignores the fact that a lot of wealthy people spend their money on drugs and alcohol. Just because they're able to do it behind closed doors, we think it's fine and we think that because we have more resources that we get to dictate how people with fewer resources get to use the resources they have. And mutual aid helps to get rid of that idea because we're saying, I trust that you know exactly what you need. Here's the money. Do with it what you need. You're a grown adult. Your story is a story I don't know and I'm not going to assume. And I see that you need this, so here you go. It's a really empathetic, community-based way to help people, to give your resources, to redistribute resources. I could go on and on about this, and the point being that these thoughts popped into my head this summer as I was being faced with the idea of mutual aid and how I could help and the mutual aid call was coming up over and over again and I had momentary thoughts in my brain where I was like, well, no, but I trust nonprofits to know what to do with the money. And I had to dismantle that thinking in my own head to realize that I don't know any better than anyone else what people need. It's not my job to dictate that, it's my job to redistribute the wealth if I want the world to be a better place to be community driven in the way that I want it to be. Obviously AOC is a goddess so she's already set up a toolkit of resources if you're interested in getting involved in mutual aid. I've linked it down below. If nothing else, go on GoFundMe. You can search your city, your state, and it'll pop up all the GoFundMe campaigns in that area that people need funding for. Give your money that way. Or if you're scrolling through Instagram, odds are you might see a call here or there for mutual aid. If someone needs help repairing their car, if someone needs help with food, transportation somewhere, there are things that you can do that are both monetary and also giving of your time or your resources that contribute to mutual aid, that contribute to making your community a better place. Now, I don't wanna overwhelm you with things in this video, so I'm gonna leave it at that. For things that you can do inside the system, Contact your representatives, especially on the local level. Get to know them and be relentless. Run for office. Outside the system, figure out what talents and resources you have and share them freely. Educate yourself by reading nonstop, watching videos, watching documentaries, whatever you have to do stay educated, and participate in mutual aid. Redistribute the wealth and resources and privileges that you have to people who need it. These feel like little things. These feel like they're not gonna fix the overarching problem, but I think it's important to always remember that 
big change comes from little things. Movements are built at the grassroot level with having conversations with other people. It comes from organizing and it comes from recognizing our interdependence on one another. We can't continue living in a society where people are so galvanized by their own individual superiority that they so can't handle when they don't get their way that they'll go and try to overthrow the entire government. It's not the world I want to live in and I think it starts with each and every one of us deciding that we want to try and make the world better in whatever way we can. So I hope this video gave you a little hope in the wake of last week. Uh, something to do, some sort of agency over what feels like a really hopeless and out of control situation. If you have any other ideas that I missed, list them down below. Comment below if you're gonna try and do any of the things that I mentioned. If you live in Minnesota and you're trying to push your reps for something, I could probably help. Reach out, be kind to one another, talk to one another, um, and let's try and make the world a better place. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good day. Goodbye.